Um, this will be a quick, I guess, I guess you could call it a quick start. I don't like saying that because there's a little bit of setup, but basically, uh, this is like how to get started with quartz. I know that a lot of people have been sort of eager to get their hands on quartz. And this video is basically for the early adopters who just want to get their hands dirty and try things out and explore things. This is not a tutorial on building a music system. It's not. Um, it's just like uh, the very like sort of introduction to using quartz and getting started with it. Um, and I think once you start playing around with it, you'll get a hand, you'll get sort of the handle on it. Um, but, but yeah, so here I have the Dorian's Run music from the uh, Time Synth live stream, and we'll be focusing on a couple of these pieces. Just you know, <clears throat> there's a lot going on in this queue. There's an introduction, there's a looping section, there's an ending section. Um, there are multiple stingers and the stingers have different rules about how, when they, when they play and such. And so, um, we're not going to be getting into all of that. I basically just want to sort of give a, a simple example of this working and the idea of quartz for those who don't, who aren't already aware of it is, um, is basically nativizing the scheduling features of the time synth. So the time synth was created at a time when, uh, before the audio engine, the new audio engine was on by default. And so we had basically two, like we had legacy audio engine and the new audio engine at the same time. And we needed some, something that worked on both of those systems and that had these cool scheduling features. And so the time synth was created basically as a miniature audio engine, but it's very impractical. It's not sustainable to keep adding features to it. And so it makes a lot more sense for, for us to sort of migrate those features to the new audio engine. Um, and that's now possible because the new audio engine is on by default, you know, and now everyone is basically using the new audio engine, but there was a time when it was only like some, like some platforms were using it and some platforms weren't. And so, um, <clears throat> and so it wasn't on by default. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that it was, it didn't make sense back then. Now it makes sense because it's on by default. And so it's new, it's, it's in beta, you know, it's, it's very, it's early access. Um, so expect that this is in flux, the API is in flux, things may change. So just keep that in mind as you explore it. Um, but the intention is eventually to, uh, replace the time synth. So if you're, you know, if you're starting a new project now and you want to, you want to explore these sorts of features, I highly encourage you to do so. Just keep that, keep in mind that it is early access. Um, okay. And, and for, if it wasn't obvious, this is 426 preview seven. So if you're on an earlier preview, maybe you won't see all this stuff or maybe it'll look different. Um, and if you're, uh, if you're on a later version, then, you know, just, just to give you context. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to be focusing on two things. First, I'm going to be focusing on this loop. This little eight bar loop. Um, and then I'm going to be focusing on this little accent, which is basically a drum trick, uh, stinger. And I have six variations of that drum stinger. So, um, and then I, and then otherwise this is just the third person template level. So there's nothing special going on here. So I'm going to be using the level graph. You can use, you know, if building your own system, you're going to use whatever you're going to use. You're going to use your own, your custom game instance, or you're going to be using an actor or whatever, you know, whatever you could do, that's your deal. Um, know that what I'm, I'm not trying to create a music system. I'm just trying to introduce these features. So let's go to the level blueprint and we'll get the begin play event. Oop, I'm way zoomed out. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to, the quartz is a, uh, you can see, I've already started messing around with this up here. Let's, uh, let's reset everything here. So we'll just get rid of all this stuff. Quartz is a subsystem. Quartz is a subsystem that man that basically stores handles to clocks. Um, and clocks exist on the sort of audio renderer. And so think of clocks as metronomes. And so you can set up multiple clocks and you can have, uh, you know, multiple actors using the same clock, or you can have multiple actors using different clocks, 
There's all these sorts of things. You can create multiple clocks at different timings, at different intervals, etc. The idea is that Quartz will allow you to access those clocks and to call commands on those clocks and to receive delegates from those clocks. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get get a handle, uh, get a reference to Quartz, get Quartz, which is the Quartz subsystem. <clears throat> and then we're going to create a new clock. And we're going to give this clock a name. You should give all of your clocks names. I recommend that you give every clock you create a name. Don't let it go to some default name or something like that. And the reason is because your names are actually how you get access to those handles. So get handle. So if, for example, somewhere else I can retrieve the I can retrieve the uh, reference to the handle via a name. So this allows, you know, actors in multiple parts of the game to access the same clock and to uh, synchronize with that clock um, using this F name. Um, so just, just I recommend always giving your clocks names. And we're just going to call this a music clock. Or we'll, we'll call it um, my um, music example. It's a clock named my music example. We can name it anything we want. It doesn't matter. It's just as long as, you know, we give it a name and we, we know that that's the name we want to use if we want to retrieve the handle from the subsystem. The clock will have settings. These will be like, uh, you know, your, your quantization settings. Um, and this is, you can ignore this if you're doing something that's not musical based, but you'll probably want to, um, reference this uh, if you want to create something with music, um, musical timings, because you'll want to set the time signature. <clears throat> so in this case, Dorian's Run, the example that I have is in 4.4, but um, it, it could be something else, right? Um, and then we have this pulse override down here if we want to do something special with quant like so that our beats are actually some custom pulse duration. We can set that up, uh, but we don't need to do that for now. Um, the pulse duration, the pulse override is perfect for compound meter or odd meters. You know, if you've got something like seven, eight, you could set it up so the pulses hit like say, I don't know, um, quarter, quarter, dotted quarter, something like that. Um, or if you were in six, eight, you could do dotted quarter, dotted quarter. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's what this pulse overrides for. Um, but for us, we're just going to use 4.4. Four. And um, so I'm just going to leave that, basically. Uh, then I'm going to set the BPM. Set beats per minute. And if you look at this uh, set quantization, you'll see all these options. There's beats per minute. There's milliseconds per tick, seconds per tick, 30 second notes per minute, um, and then uh, set ticks per second. So. You know, ticks per second is basically hertz, which is cool. If you're it, it, seconds per tick is like, you know, um, a tick is basically a 30 second note, just so you know. Um, so if you're if you're not working in musical timing, if you're, say, working in some sort of sound design thing and you just need a pulsing uh, constant sound beeping or whatever, then um, <clears throat> playing, uh, then you can set up a, a custom tick duration or frequency or whatever. Um, using this. Um, for me, I'm going to set up my my uh, custom pulse to be beats per minute. And the Dorian's Run music is 90 beats per minute. So I'm going to set this to not, not 9, 90. There we go. And I don't need to worry about any of this stuff, but I can set up a, a quantization boundary so that it happens on, you know, so that the, the BPM changes, say, like on the next bar or something like that. I'm going to leave this uh, as a default setting, which I believe is on the bar. And then, um, let's see. So that sets up our clock. So then what I want to, I want to do is I'm going to, uh, so this is where things get interesting. Basically, um, the, uh, the play function that I want to call is play quantize or quantize play, play quantized. Let me just take this off. 
play quantized. So this is the function that I will call, um, and I will I will give it uh, my clock handle. Whoops, sorry, I didn't I didn't cache my clock. Let's do that right now. We're going to promote this to variable, and this will be my uh, music clock. Whoops, clock. There we go. So we'll just do that, and then we'll just do. Let's just break. I hate it when that happens. Okay, we'll just do that. Boom. So now we have a uh, cached reference to our clock handle. Um, <clears throat> so the play quantize is called on an audio component. This is the cool part, okay? So what that means is your quantized playback could be any, any spatialized sound source that plays on a, um, that plays on an audio component, right? It could be, uh, it could be a source bus, right? Um, it could be a sound cue. It could be a sound wave. So it's, there's a lot more, it opens up just being able to play with, play it on a audio component. But that also means it could be spatialized. So you could have quantized playback, sound playback on spatialized sounds in the world. This means that you're, you know, if you wanted to, you could you could spatialize all your musical instruments, or you could have you know sounds, like like sound designs. Uh, you could have sounds playing on actors that are automatically synchronized to some sort of musical clock or something like that. So, or synchronized with each other in the world. It's very cool uh, what this what the implications of this are, and so I'm just showing a very simple example. But but there's it's go, it goes really deep and uh, you know we're all really excited to see what people do with it and so I'm I really want to make this video just to make sure that all the early adopters out there who like to get their hands dirty and try things out are going to try things out <laughs> so um, this is eventually what we're going to call but it means we need an audio component and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to do something that. Uh, probably shouldn't do, <laughs> but I'm doing it for convenience. Okay. Um, so what this means is if you're making a music system, uh, you would want to make some sort of audio component manager to make sure like you're round robining audio components or, uh, you know, in, in a way that, that you're not stomping over your existing playing sound, etc. Um, what I'm going to be doing is making an audio component pool that just fires and forgets audio components <laughs> um and uh uh we're just going to um we're just going to uh you know accept that this is bad form <laughs> so uh i'm just gonna call my little ac pool <laughs> and uh audio component And what it's going to be is um, is an array, is an array of audio components. Like I said, don't do it my way. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna um, <clears throat> we're gonna create. Let's do create sound two D because uh, it's just music that I'm playing. I don't need to spatialize it. And um, we'll play my. We want to play this loop. Okay. So we're gonna create an audio component with that um, loop on it. Um, and I don't need to worry about any of this stuff, but obviously all the normal stuff that you would do with when it comes to music, you know, creating music systems with audio components, all of those rules still apply, except now you're, you're guaranteed to have those sounds play synchronous to some sort of musical timing. Um, and then we're going to uh, just add, oops, we're gonna add this. Uh, so I'm having audio auto destroy. This is this is where it's better to do a pool. It's better practice to do a pool. But I'm going to auto destroy. So when they're done playing, they will uh, remove themselves, and then um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So like I said, it's not it's not good form, but you know, there you go. 
<laughs> so we're just making sure we keep a reference of it around for garbage collection. Okay, so we want to play on that specific audio component. And um, we need a, a clock handle. Get this clock handle. Boom. We want to synchronize it to our music clock. And then we need our <clears throat> quantization boundary. And so for this case, we'll go transport relative, which I believe is will occur on the next multiple of this duration since the clock started ticking. So we're going to do on the bar, the first bar of our transport. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a delegate on this quantization command. So let's add an event dispatcher. And we will create um, an event and we'll call it our uh, uh, play uh, queue status event, something like that. And we'll create a switch. And basically what this allows us to do is we've got a bunch of executions based off the status of our quantization play command. Like, how is it doing? Did it fail to queue? Is it queued? Has it been canceled? Is it about to start? Has it started? Etc. And so um, the clock that we've created by default is paused. And we will resume the clock. We want to resume the clock when our our, our, mu our music is basically ready to play. We don't want to start the clock before our music is ready to play because if our music isn't queued up yet, then we'll be late by one bar. It'll be like the next bar. But we want to start on the first bar. So we want to make sure that our music's queued up. <laughs> you know, think of this as like the conductor has raised their baton and is eyeballing... <laughs> <laughs> all the first chairs and making sure everyone is ready to go instruments ready and when we're queued then we can resume our clock and this is how um, you can ensure that it will play uh, right away um, and then the one thing that will we'll, the one other thing that we'll do is uh, with our clock is we will also subscribe let's sub subscribe to a quantization event. We'll subscribe to, well, let's do all quantization events. So you can kind of get a sense of all the different options. And then we'll just create a um, event dispatcher and that, and then we'll create an event that is just basically our music clock quantization events. And we'll do a switch. So here you can see <clears throat> all of the different quantization events that occur, including tick. If you're doing something with sound design um, and you weren't using musical timings, uh, you could just use the tick timing and then you would just subscribe just to the tick. Uh, you can also just subscribe to individual ones, but I decided to subscribe to all of them. So we can just sort of see what's there. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do is... Um, I'm just going to print, let's do a beat print, oops, print text. So on the beat, we'll print, te we'll print text and we'll do format text. And then we'll just print out um, our bar number bar and our beat beat. And then we'll just, yeah, we'll go like that. Boom. Like that. Okay, <clears throat> so what this should do, if we've done everything correctly, is it should play the first sort of repetition of our loop, um, and it will um, print out the uh, the bars and beats um, as as we tick along. So there we go. Just bar two, three. Four, two, three, four, 
five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. And then and then we're done. Uh, and the clock continues to go. Um, so cool. Now what we want to do is we want to do two things, I think. We want, uh, when we hit that, uh, maybe the last beat or the last bar, I think we want to make sure we we say, hey, play our, um, play our uh, uh, loop again. And basically we want to just set up a retrigger. So we're going to do this bit right here. Um, I'm just going to copy it over and paste it. And this is where, you know, this is all getting very sketchy as I'm adding it to my pool. And then I'm, you know, uh, basically ignoring it. And let's put a little se sequence <clears throat> here. So at the end of our sequence, we'll print our bar and beat. And then what we'll do is um, we'll put a little branch. A little branch. So, and we want an end. So, when the number of bars is greater than seven, so when we're bar one, we're on bar eight, and the beat <clears throat> is greater than. three so uh this is basically when we're when we're on bar eight beat four we're going to queue up another sound and this um this time transport relative yeah that's fine and i think and then we want to also say hey reset transport and this will zero out the uh, bar and the beat the beat and bar count on the transport. So let's let's test it out. Four, there we go. One, we started it over again. Two, two. So now we've got a loop. Okay, and the, and you might be asking yourself, why don't you just cut a loop? You could totally do that. You could trim a loop, and then put it in. But here's where my experience says, don't do that. <laughs> okay, and the reason is because, and I'm sorry to say this, if you've been doing this, and uh, and you know, I'm telling you right now. That it's 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 a mistake. You don't want to cut loops for music loops, especially if you need to synchronize them with other systems, have other beat, beat things or whatever. And the reason is because when you're in your DAW and you're trimming your loop, you're like, here's my uh, bar boundary. <clears throat> when you cut that loop, you're actually not right on the sample. The sample and the bar doesn't line up. Okay. It's close. It might be even unnoticeable uh, for in most cases. It's very close, but it's not exact. Okay, your sample rate has nothing to do with your tempo, and so um, you trim on that bar or beat boundary or whatever in your DAW, and the sample is probably going to be straddling it. It's and so your your actual duration of your loop is going to be either shorter or longer than your musical duration <clears throat> which means that when you loop it if you wait long enough it'll go out of sync that's just the way it is so the better method the superior method is to re-trigger every you know x number of f bars or whatever and the re-trigger makes sure that everything that re-triggers is it, it starts in sync um, and this also gives you a bunch of other stuff, like you can, you know, bake in your reverb tails and all this sort of cool stuff. That's that's just a lot better. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so so there, we've got our loop, super duper. Um, now, 
let's add our uh, drum accent. Yeah. Okay. So let's create a sound cue. This is something you couldn't do with the time synth, which is neat. Um, you can use something beside, you know, besides a sound wave. So we'll just create a simple. Well, this will be a drum accent. Oops. Double click. There we go. <clears throat> and, um, and then we'll just uh, grab our uh, six drum accents. And we'll just create a little random, random node. So we got this. Play. And this is just six variations of little drum rolls and hits. And uh, they're all one beat long before the hit, and then they hit. So they're predictable. Um, okay, so let's do it so that when I hit, uh, let's change these class settings. Oops, the, cla the class default so that I uh, receive input. So I'm gonna receive input from player zero. And then we'll just say uh, input, let's say when someone hits input, We'll just say the number key one. Um, then we will basically <laughs> we'll do most of this. <laughs> We're gonna cheat a little bit here. Very similarly, um, we're going to let's just put a branch in front. And what we'll do is we'll go like this. Oh my god. I've got some sort of truck in the parking lot that is beeping. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so now we've got, we're, we're creating an audio component with our drum accent. We're adding it to our audio component pool. The only difference is that um, we want to be transport relative, but we can, this actually technically could probably get away with, because of our sort of pulsing rhythm, uh, any eighth note timing probably be fine um so we'll try that first and, and we'll mess around with that a little bit but what i want to do is i want to set up a little uh variable that's like p uh, b can accent because what we're going to be doing is actually gating this so we don't we don't hit hit it too many times okay and then what we'll do is we're actually going to create boop, 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 boop. <clears throat> um, bind uh, audio finished. I think we can do this. So we're going to create a um, event binding uh, to because it's an audio component. Whoops, sorry to do that um actually let's do this back up here and we'll go like this we'll just sneak this in the middle <clears throat> and then we'll create a little event dispatch here and this will be the accent let's create a matching event accent finished okay and this will be this will make it true Okay, so what that means is we're binding <clears throat> on audio finished uh, to this delegate here so that when the accent is done playing, it will allow another accent to play. But another accent can't play while this one's playing. That's what I have set up here. And actually what we could do, no, no, no this, is, this is what we wanna do it, yeah. So uh, let's try this out. Got it. I hit one. Oh, am I not getting my delegate? I'm not getting my unf unfinished delegate is not hitting. Uh, by audio finished. I think I'm losing this delegate because it's getting destroyed. <laughs> okay, let's just check what we got. Bind. Event audio finished. Uh, you know what I could do? Back state changed. Play 
Okay, like percent. I think, actually, I think this might be better. Let's do this. Let's try this. I mean, it's getting all crowded up here. Okay, let's try this. Playing, it stopped, it's paused. I think. I think this will call. I think it will call. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think it will call. It it might be dis so. My concern is it might be auto destroying it underneath the because it might be. Um, playing it and then it's done and it destroys it and then the delegate doesn't get fired. Uh, so that could be happening. Let's do this. Okay, one. One, yeah. Okay, let's do this. We'll, we'll um, this is this is really useful, by the way, if you're reusing audio components. But because I'm firing and forgetting them and throwing them away, it's sort of like uh, I'm not treating them with respect. <laughs> so here's what we'll do: instead of this, instead of this, we'll keep it simple. That's what I should have done at the beginning: is kept it simple. Y'all should have said, Dan, keep it simple. Um, we can set up our quantization delegate here. Um, and we'll use the quantization delegate. Um, and we'll we'll create a uh, accent Q status. And uh, switch on that. And then what we can do is basically, you know, if it's... <clears throat> If it started, we could probably do it again. Uh, yeah, we're probably fine. If it started, if the roll overlaps the tail, it's not the end of the world. It might be fine actually. So we'll do that. So we can replay. We can play another accent if if we've started, or I guess if we've canceled, or if we failed to queue. There we go. Boom. Okay, let's hit it. One. 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 Okay, that's cool. Now, let's do it on every beat instead. Boop. Now it should be beat synchronous. Nice. Now, check this out. Now let's do this. Let's do it a uh, beat on beat four of the bar. So it will always play on the fourth beat of the bar, making it the, the hit, the downbeat of the next bar, right? Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. This is the long time cued. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, um, you can kind of imagine this is i think this is a good stopping point um you know like look at all this stuff that i'm doing i'm managing state on the game thread based off of the queuing status based off the playback status of the individual uh, audio component you know and so and like i said these are audio components so they could be spatialized there's all sorts of stuff you could do and all of that stuff could also drive things happening you know in gameplay you could have i don't know like you know people dancing on the beat or whatever, like little cubes bumping around or changing shape or whatever uh, based on the beat, all sorts of stuff or hits, um, all sorts of stuff you can do there. And so I encourage you to dig in. I encourage you to experiment. I encourage you to try things out. I encourage you to try to synchronize, you know, find new ways to synchronize gameplay and music and, and just, you know, make, make it a better place for audio <laughs> and have fun, have fun fun. Have fun. All right. See ya.